Hi everyone, and how are you today? Welcome to our lesson on Unit 4, titled Being a Teen. Before we begin our lesson proper, I hope you have your English textbook, your English exercise book to write your answers, or some paper, and of course, your stationery. A pen and pencil will do. Are you ready with your books? Now let's begin. The main skill for today is reading. We will do a little of speaking too, but the teaching of the speaking skill will be more of at a demonstration level only, meaning I will show you how the speaking is done. What are the learning objectives for today? Well, firstly, you'll be able to read a text about the history of hip hop and answer questions based on the text. Next, you'll be able to explain and justify your own point of view about music culture. But what can you do by the end of this episode? Here are my three expectations of you by the end of this episode. First, you can match at least six out of nine words to their meanings. The second criteria set for you is you can match all five paragraphs to five headings. Next, you can write true or false for at least five out of seven statements. These final two outcomes for the lesson today will be decided by your teacher, whether you can speak about one music culture as well as whether you can state a point of view about your choice. Do we have hip hop in Malaysia? Do you know anything about the hip hop culture in Malaysia? Uh, but before we talk about our country, let's read a brief a history of hip hop. Now open your textbook, Full Blast Plus for Students book, to page 58, look at the highlighted words. The words with an orange highlight, I will read the words aloud so that you don't miss them. In paragraph one, the highlighted words are roots, immigrants, and guests. In paragraph two, the highlighted word is section. In paragraph three, there are era rivals outdo. And in paragraph four, we have protested and poverty. A total of nine words highlighted in orange. These are the words that you will learn from this reading text. So let's understand these nine words before we even read the text. What's the fastest way to get the meaning of these words? Yes, you can either Google for the meanings or you can simple check them out in a dictionary. But don't forget, both the dictionary and Dear Mr. Google will give you multiple meanings, many meanings, so you need to check with a sentence where the word is located and then decide which meaning best fits the sentence. Let's do the first two words together. Roots, immigrants, they are both in the same sentence. Have you located them? They are in paragraph one, line two. The roots of hip hop go back to Jamaican immigrants in New York City in the 1960s. Now let's look up to the meanings of these words. The first word, roots. The first meaning given is roots is a part of a plant which is attached to the ground. There is a picture attached. The pictures make it easier for us to understand. The second meaning of roots is denoting or relating to something from a particular ethnic or cultural origin, especially music. Other similar words are source origin, starting point, beginnings. Which meaning would you choose before you decide what need you do? Exactly, look at the sentence. The roots of hip hop. Hip hop is a kind of music, definitely not a plant. So which would be the correct meaning? The first or the second, the left or the right? Yes, the better meaning would be the second one the one on your right, therefore roots in this sentence would mean the origin or the beginnings, okay? Now for the next word, immigrants. Back to the dictionary or Google and you will get, amazingly, there is only one explanation given for the word immigrant. A person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country, someone who goes and lives in another country for a very long time, maybe forever. So immigrants, the plural form, are people who come to live permanently in a foreign country. Many similar words are given with the explanation of the word immigrants. Let me just read four of them. Newcomers, settlers, non-natives, 
foreigners. And all these words fit the sentence. The roots of hip-hop go back to Jamaican immigrants in New York City in the 1960s. Pretty perfectly. So immigrants, the plural of immigrant, immigrant with an S would simply mean foreigners. My question to you, are these immigrant people of Jamaica? No, they are Jamaican immigrants, meaning they are foreigners in the land of Jamaica. These people have moved to Jamaica and are residing there permanently. Now, for the meanings of the balance seven words, we still have one more word in paragraph one, guests. Guests means person or people who are invited to visit someone's home or attend a particular social occasion, and a similar word to guests and vi visitors. Section is the word highlighted in paragraph two. Meaning of section, any of the more or less distinct parts into which something is or may be divided from which is made up. Now this is a mouthful and a very long explanation. So let's look at the other words given and maybe it'll be easier to understand section. Segment part, so to put this simply, section is a portion of the whole, a part. In paragraph three, the highlighted word is era. In this sentence after his debut, Herc became Cool Herc, the most famous DJ of the era known as the old school. The best meaning will be a long and distinct period of history. Other possible words for era are age, period, and time. Rivals in this sentence, the dances could be very competitive as two rivals try to outdo each other on the floor. Means, persons or things competing with another for the same thing. And other words which have the same meaning as rivals are competitors and opponents. The next word in the same sentence is outdo, and the meaning is to be superior in action or performance, which simply means to be better at, to outshine. The last two words are in paragraph four. First is the word protested in the sentence. Bands such as Public Enemy had hits with songs that protested against different issues. Protested meaning objective. So the phrase protested against here would mean that the lyrics in the song showed objections to different issues. Finally, poverty in the sentence. Many hip hop artists today still rap about issues such as poverty and violence. The meaning of poverty is a state of being very poor and another possible word that we can use to replace poverty is impoverishment. Read the rubrics, the instructions. Look at the highlighted words in the text and try to guess what they mean. Then match them with the meanings one to nine below. We have looked at the nine words as well as learned the meanings of these nine words, yes? So all we need to do now is match them with the meanings one to nine given in exercise D. Why don't you try matching them first? I will read numbers one to nine, and as I read, solely, of course, you can try matching the meaning to the highlighted words on page 58. Ready? Let's begin. Number one, the state of being poor. Number two, the place or culture where somebody, something, 
comes from the origin. Number three, a period of history. Just a word of advice before we on. Then it comes to the meanings of words or phrases. The answer you write must be in agreement to the question. And what does this mean? Well, if your question is in the singular form, then your answer must be in the singular form too. Likewise, if plural, then answer also in the plural form and this is the same when it comes to the tense. If questions is in the present tense, answer must also be in the present tense. Yes, the tense form should also be the same. Now let's continue with number four. Number four, part of something. Number five, a person that competes with another. Number six, do or say something publicly because you disagree. And number seven, do better than somebody else. Number eight, a person who has come to live in a country they are not from. And number nine, a person invited to a house or an event. Now take a quick look at your answers. Check them. Check the spelling of your answers. The words have been highlighted in orange on page 58, so there should be no spelling errors. Let's check your answers. Here are the nine words from page 58 in your textbook. The nine words highlighted in orange. Let's begin with question one. The state of being poor. What's the answer? Yes, poverty. And which word in the explanation would have helped you? Exactly, the word poor. Next question, number two. The place or culture where somebody or something comes from, their origin, and the answer is roots. The helpful word would be origin. Next number, three, a period of history. As period is the helpful word, era is the answer. Number four, part of something. The keyword is being part. The answer, segment. Next, a person that competes with another. The word which is helpful, competes. And the word highlighted in orange on page 58 that you will select is rivals. Pause is the answer. Rivals, pause. Remember this, which I mentioned earlier. The answer you write must be in agreement to the question. Now, let's apply this into our question. Number five. Let's reread number five. A person, one person, a singular word. So rivals needs to be changed to the singular form too. The answer is rival, R-I-V-A-L. Number six. Do or say something publicly because you disagree. The helpful word is disagree. So, the word on page 58 which you will select is protested. Now, let's take a look at number six again. Number six, do or say. Do is an imperative form. The root word say, also the same imperative form, root word. Thus, we will change protested to protest, P-R-O-T-E-S-T. -E An answer for number six is protest. Next number seven, do better than somebody else. Notice that we only have three answers left. The helpful phrase for number seven is better than, and outdo is the answer. Number eight, is a person who has come to live in a country they are not from. Once you see the phrase, live in a country they are not from, the word from page 58 that you will choose is immigrants. But because of number eight is a person, one person, a singular word, the answer is immigrant. I-M-M-I-G-R-A-N-T. Now for the last one, number nine a person invited to a house or an event. The word invited should have helped you decide on guests. But 
This is the last unused word, right? So you can't go wrong on choice. But again, here answers needs to be in the singular form. Because of the phrase a person, so your answer will be guest. G-U-E-S-T. So, how many did you get right? Did you achieve target one? Remember target one? Well, if you have scored six, seven, eight, or nine, well done. You have attained the target set for you at the beginning of this lesson. So, give yourself a tick for target one. If you did not achieve the target now, well, just redo. Do it again, and I am sure you will achieve target one. It is very okay to repeat the work. Nothing to be embarrassed about, okay? Pause before we start reading the comprehension text for today. I have a question for you. Have you seen this? Do you know what it means? It is a punctuation mark and is called the asterisk. It looks like a little star. If you look at the computer keyboard, you will see this punctuation mark. Asterisk. Above the number eight, now, when is the asterisk used? We use the asterisk to show that a footnote, reference, or comment has been added to the original text. Look at page 58 in your textbook. Can you locate the three words with the asterisk? Pause, look at the screen behind me. I have highlighted these three words in DJ, in yellow, MC in red and AKA in pink. Now look at the bottom of the page. You will see the footnote which give these abbreviations in full. DJ, disc jockey, MC, master of ceremonies, AKA also known as. Next, look at the title, more than just beats and rhymes, which gives you an idea that hip hop is not just a type of music. There is much more to hip hop. Below this title is a subtitle, a brief history of hip hop. So when we read this text, you will receive information about how hip hop started and developed, okay? Now let's do exercise B on page 58. Exercise B is just above the title, more than just beats and rhymes. Have you located exercise B? What are you to do? Let's read the instructions. Do read along with me. Read the text quickly and match the headings A to G with the paragraphs one to five. There are two extra headings which you do not need to use. So we have seven headings, but only five paragraphs, hence two headings are not a match to any of the five paragraphs. The instruction states that you are to read quickly and match how do you read quickly. Just scheme. Read rapidly to get the general idea in the paragraph. Focus on the big words or the important words just to get an overview of the paragraph. Let's do paragraph one together so that you understand how to read quickly and match. Now I'm going to read paragraph one at a pretty fast pace. As I read, circle or underline in pencil, the words or phrases which you feel are important for you to gauge a global understanding of the paragraph. Just select the words or the phrases which tell you paragraph one is about, okay? Are you ready? Let's begin. If you ask someone who Clive Campbell is, they probably wouldn't know. Yet, without him, there would be no hip hop. The roots of hip hop go back to Jamaican immigrants in New York City in the 1960s. Young people there grew up listening to the rhythms of funk and soul. This music was great for social events that needed a DJ who chose and played popular songs. There was also an MC who entertained guests between songs by telling jokes and inventing rhymes. Are you done? Have you selected your words or phrases? I have only selected six, what about you? Here is my selection. Jamaican immigrants, hip hop roots, 1960s, funk and soul, 
popular songs, entertained guests, is your selection somewhat similar to mine? Let me go on to the next step. And then you may be able to see things clearer. Look at heading A. The gathering that became a legend. Compare heading A to the words and phrases that I have selected. Notice that we do not see anything related to a gathering or the word legend. No mention of these words or words similar in meaning to legend or gathering. So, the conclusion is, heading A is not the match to paragraph 1. Now let's look at headings B, C, and D. Heading B, hip-hop goes global comparing this heading to my selection. There is nothing which states about going international. Yes, there is about hip-hop but only the roots of hip-hop. No mention about global, worldwide, in paragraph 1. So, the decision will be, yes, B is also not a match. What about heading C? Popular bands of today. Pause. Nothing about bands, nothing about today, the only time mentioned is 1960s. Is heading C a match? No, most definitely not. And heading D. Hip-hop culture begins to develop is also not a match because we have hip-hop roots in paragraph 1, not hip-hop culture and nothing about development of hip-hop. We have checked out A, B, C, and D. All four are not a match to paragraph 1. We still have three more to go. Let's continue. Now for heading E, Cool Nights in the City. You need to understand that cool nights here may not refer to the weather, cool air, but cool nights would mean a night of fun or an awesome night. Comparing this with my selection of keywords from paragraph 1, funk and soul, popular songs, entertained guests would bring about the idea of fun and awesome cool nights. And the word city from New York City is also evident. Hence, heading E, cool nights in the city would be the match to paragraph 1. But just to be sure, let's check out headings F and G. Looking at heading F, rapping techniques, well, neither rapping nor techniques were mentioned and in the message spreads across the nations which is heading G. Nothing here about expanding or spreading as well as no mention about nations. So, both F and G are clearly not a match to paragraph 1. And so, your answer will be matching heading E with paragraph 1. Let us do one more together, but at a faster rate, okay? The last paragraph, paragraph 5. Do you remember what to do as we read quickly? Yes. Please pick out the important words or phrases. Underline or circle with pencil, please. Remember that you are using school textbooks and you need to return clean textbooks back to your school at the end of the year. Thus, use a pencil so that you can erase later. Let's begin. I'm going to read fast. Paragraph 5. Hip-hop has come a long way since the block parties in the Bronx. Today, if you travel to any country in the world, you will find a local hip-hop culture. But one thing hasn't changed. Fans still can't get through of those beats and rhythms. Which words or phrases did you select? Now, try matching to one of these six headings. We have already matched headings E with paragraph 1. So, you only have six headings, A, B, C, D, F, and G, to choose from. Try matching. Pause. Let's check with what I have done. The phrase I chose from paragraph 5 was, Any country in the world, and after a few words, you also will see hip-hop. This phrase tells us that hip-hop has hit the international arena which is also the same as hip-hop going global. And this is heading B. Hip-hop goes global. 
So we will match paragraph 5 with heading B. Did you get the same answer? I hope you did! Now, you try paragraphs 2, 3, and 4. I will read all three paragraphs quickly, and you will select the keywords or phrases and then match. All right. The blue box has the headings we have not used yet. Headings A, C, D, F, and G, okay? Done? Ready to check your answers? Now, which heading did you match paragraph 2 to? Right, heading A should be matched to paragraph 2. Why? Both heading and paragraph have the word gathering. But what is more important is the phrase, party, moved outside to Cedar Park, telling you that the party became so popular and famous that the number of people grew and so it had to be moved to a bigger venue or location. Showing you that it became a legend. So, A is matched to 2. Now, what's your answer for paragraph 3? Yes, D. Hip-hop culture begins to develop the early DJs coming up with techniques such as scratching, MC starting to rap, DJ Africa Bambara giving the name hip-hop, other elements coming in like graffiti and breaking, finally about breakdancers. As you read, I hope you see the development, the move and progress from one to the next. And this is why D is the best match. We have come to the final paragraph, 4. Looking at all the time and location, phrases, 80s and 90s across the USA, west coast of the USA, popular across the country. So obviously, hip-hop is spreading, alright? Then when you read phrases like protested against issues, rap about issues, we know that hip-hop communicates some kind of a message. Hence, G, the message spreads across the nations, is matched with paragraph 4. So, C and F are the two extra headings we do not need to use. Did you get all right? We did two together and you did three on your own. Did you achieve target two? I do hope you have matched all five paragraphs to five of the correct headings. Till we meet again, practice listening to reading, speaking, and writing in the English language. Goodbye, everyone!